Hello booktube, this is Aaron from Aaron Read a Book or Aaron Read a Book. Uh, I've got a tag for Tag Tuesday. Uh, I've been a bit behind on the tags but now I want to start catching up hopefully. Um, I was. This is the Girl Scout cookie um, tag or the Girl Scout biscuit tag as, as uh, Gavin um, calls it. And I, I was tagged by Gavin from Genre Books and uh, he's quite a new booktuber, but he's sort of very similar kind of taste in books to me. So um, his, his channel is great, so check that out. And this was created by Melinda at a Web of Stories, which is another great channel. Um, uh, yeah, so this this is obviously Girl Scout cookies. So we don't have them in England, but uh, <laughs> Gavin helpfully, or, or Gavin said you can get them on army bases apparently, but. Um, he helpfully translated them into <laughs> to English biscuits, uh, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stick with the American originals and just uh, mispronounce them all. Um, I've always wanted to to try Girl Scout cookies because they're on like American TV shows and they look amazing. Um, anyway, let's let's get let's get off the biscuits. Uh, let's get into the into the question. So, question number one: Trefoils. I don't know if that's how you say it. A classic novel you love. Um, I'm going to go with one that's n not everyone's favourite, um, or it's, it's often people's least favourite of an author they love, and that is um, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Um, and this is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, not Penguin Classics Deluxe, sorry, the Penguin Clothbound Classics Edition. And um, recently, uh, Daniel at Guilty Feet did a video about these editions and said they're sort of not very good. And they look really nice, but look, you can see this is one I actually read and it's just rubbed the front off of it, which is really annoying. Um, but anyway, the, the book itself is, I, I love it. Uh, I think a lot of people want Liz, sort of Lizzie Bennet style characters from Jane Austen and so Fanny Price who's a very shy and sort of retiring uh, they don't get as much enjoyment out of and it's also quite a big one of the bigger um, Austens but that's what I like about it it's, it's kind of quite slow paced and you're with a shy character and you're in her head all the time um, and I just, I just love, I love Penny Pie, so I'm, I'm gonna stick up for, for Mansfield Park, and it, it it's, it's one, definitely one of my favourite Jane Austen books. Um, two Lemon Ups, a book you find inspiring. Um, I'm gonna go for a non-fiction for this one because, uh, I don't know, I don't find fiction that inspiring apart from as, as in like um. That's inspiringly good writing or whatever. But um, I'm going to go with um, uh, Endurance by Alfred Lansing. Um, uh, Farah uh, from Bookstalgic recently read this and, and was raving about it. But uh, I read it many years ago and it's one of my favourite all-time non-fiction books. It, it, it's a ridiculous story uh, of, of uh, Ernest Shackleton's um, journey to, I can never remember if it's, yeah, the Antarctic. I, can never, I always get Antarctic and Arctic mixed up, but yeah, the, the journey to the Antarctic and they get stranded on the ice. Endurance is the name of their ship and they're stuck on the ice for, for sort of two years and eventually they realise no one's going to come rescue them, so they send a boat out and they cross it like for weeks and weeks over over the sea um but yeah it this is just this is a true story lansing interviewed everyone quite soon after so it, it's pretty much all primary sources and it's just an insane story you like it it reads if it was fiction you wouldn't believe some of the stuff that happens and it's just inspiring that they sort of stick stuck together and and survived on this ice for years uh, with, with 
with very little supplies and things. But um, yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine sort of the generation of today <laughs> being as together and and stuff on there. Although they'd have the internet and stuff. Um, but yeah, I could have endurance. Very good non-fiction if you've never read it. Um, S'mores, a comforting book. Uh, what have I gone for this? I've gone, I've gone for one that I used to re read a lot when I was a, sort of a teenager and uh, sort of younger man, and that's High Fidelity by Nick Hornby. Um, you can tell that I've read this a lot because it's been in the bath. Uh, you can see it's all sodden and the sticker stuff all over it. Um, but yeah, High Fidelity is. A, you may have seen the the American film of this, but it's actually it's actually an English book. Um, it's I think this influenced me a lot because I love doing like top tens, and they they're obsessed by top tens in this, and a lot of the music in it I then checked out. They they talk a lot about music, and I then checked out and got into a lot of the lot of bands because of this book, most notably Bruce Springsteen, who who I'm a fan of. And I, I had to sort of dismissed before I read this book. But yeah, it's it's kind of comforting just because I read it a lot when I was a teenager. It's a very easy read. It's sort of a romantic comedy book with lots of music in it. So it's it's very, very fun. And you can sort of read it really quickly. And the I quite enjoy the film as well. The the, the character that they got Jack Black to play is perfect casting. Um Adventure Fools, an adventurous book. I, I'm, I'm going to be very boring here and, and choose the same book that everyone else is choosing, but I have a really nice edition of it, so I can show it off. And that is um, The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. Again, this is kind of a comfort book to me because I read this quite a lot when I was a teenager as well, but I didn't have it in this beautiful edition. Um, I don't think I would, this is fully illustrated as well, I, I'm sure many of you saw this when it came out uh, a few years ago, but it's it's got all the original illustrations in it, I'm trying to find one now. Yeah, so it's got like Tolkien's original illustrations. Um, yeah, it's just, it is, it's the best adventure story, isn't it? So I can't really pick anything else. Um, Yeah, so we'll go with that. Um, Samoa's a book that blends two or more genres. I think that's if that biscuit's named after Samoa, that's that's the right pronunciation. I think um, lots of books kind of blend fantasy and science fiction, which I quite like. I don't like. I don't like sort of literary fiction and genre fiction blending. Like, I hate magical realism. It's I really, it, I just find it weird. I don't like when the real world and fantasy worlds collide. But when two different types of fantasy world collide, however, that's much more interesting. And I'm going to go with um, M. John Harrison's The Pastel City. And this is a mixture of it says on the cover here actually the greatest fancy novel since June so it is you would call it fantasy because it's kind of a medieval chivalrous world um but it's post-apocalyptic at the same time so there's there's sort of weird machines and energy weapons and things in the landscape um as well, so that, that people can use, but they don't know how they work or and don't know how to recreate them. Um, it, it's sort of a, a Don Quixote type story as well, uh, where there's like knights and castles and they go on a long journey. Um, but it's it's a, it's a very short book, brilliant, brilliant, beautiful writing M. John Harrison. He's on the very literary side of sci-fi and fantasy. So if you like literary, science fiction I would give this a go. This is the first part in the, in the, the series called The Viraconium as well, but very interesting writer. Um, 
series. I, and I need to I need to complete that series. I only read the first one. Um, do si dos, either a book you love that everyone seems to hate, or a book you hate that everyone seems to love. Um, I, I can't think of anything that I love that everyone hates. Um, but I've got lots of books that I hate that everyone loves. So <laughs> um, the first one that came to hand is um, The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I quite enjoyed, uh, what's it called, Station Eleven. And I thought the TV series of Station Eleven was, was really good. I thought it was much better than even the book. But I, it excited me... Um, Station Eleven because it has a lot of stuff I like. It's Shakespearean, it's post-apocalyptic and it was quite interesting following a, a Shakespearean troupe around in this sort of wasteland. And then so I pre-ordered The Glass Hotel thinking oh this is this is a really interesting author and this book is just so boring. It's it's insultingly boring. At times I thought it was like an experiment and tedium, but um, apparently not. And a lot of people seem to like it, and I, I don't know why, because it's it's about a Ponzi scheme. It's it's like a business book. It's really dull. There's m it's way too many characters, so you never get to know or like anyone. And uh, it just really didn't work for me. It's, it, was, it, it had loads of tropes that I don't like in, like, it's businessy and it's about there's lots of rich people in it that that you hear like are unrelatable to me <laughs> um but yeah it's a fa uh, just a very boring book apparently the third one in the series is, is better they're, they're all, these are kind of a loosely connected trilogy i think i can't so what's the third one sea of tranquility so people seem to like that one better but like i've never almost everyone likes this one. I've seen a couple of reviews that agree with me on, on booktube but but not many. So but it, I think also it was just because I had quite high hopes as well that 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 made me dislike it even more. Um Thin Mints, um one of your all time favourite books. I'm gonna go with a a, a non thin book <laughs> and that is um Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurchie. Um, yeah, again, this one's a bit of a cliche on BookTube. A lot, everyone seems to love Lonesome Dove. Oh, I just think it, it's this would be a comfort read as well because it just spending time with these characters is so uh, much fun. It's as soon as you start the book again, it's 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 like getting into a Sort of a warm bed or a warm bath or something it's just uh, a brilliant book and it, it's got quite a lot of elements that could qualify for every one of these tags as well it's 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 adventurous as well but yeah it's a, it's a great novel e even if you don't like westerns you should give Lonesome Dove a try because it's just a brilliant a brilliant book um, Number eight, tagalongs, tags from fellow booktubers. Um, I think quite a lot of people have been tagged in this. Um, and forgive me if the people I'm tagging have already been tagged, but um, I'm going to tag uh, Nikki at my, my my messy bookshelf. Uh, she's been doing lots of tags, and she she tagged me the other day. Um, and I'm going to also tag Chatty at the Mad Chatter because. <laughs> I, I love it when she does tags because she's she she does love a chat she's got the the best channel name for her for her personality it's like she did she did a tag uh, a few months ago that was like two hours long which I found really funny um but yeah have a good one book G. um let me know uh your answers to these and if you're American which of these cookies is your favorite because I I, I want to know more about them have a good one, booktube.